Welcome to the channel, my friends. Today, we're diving headfirst into a culinary culture that's full of flavor, Colombia. Forget the ordinary food you're used to. This is about to get exciting. We're talking bold flavors, sizzling street food, and enough spice to wake up your taste buds. So get your aprons on, sharpen your knives, and pay close attention. This isn't just any cooking show. This is Colombian street food with a twist. Let's get cooking, everyone. First stop, the Colombian staple. Right, listen up. First up, we're tackling the backbone of Colombian cuisine, arepas. These aren't your average pancakes. These are savory discs of pure corn goodness. We're talking a crispy golden exterior and a soft fluffy inside. And don't even think about serving these plain. We're going to stuff them with everything from savory cheese to tender, juicy meats. Get those frying pans hot, everyone. We're about to turn up the heat and show you how to make a repas that would make your Colombian friends weep with joy. This isn't rocket science, people. Get ready and let's get cooking. First things first, mastering the dough. Now, the key to a perfect arepa is the dough. We're not talking about some ordinary regular ones like you've made before. This needs to be smooth, pliable, and ready to take on any flavor we throw at it. We're using masarepa, a special pre-cooked corn flour. Combine it with warm water and a touch of salt, and then get your hands dirty. Knead it, love it, and make sure it's as smooth as a baby's skin. Don't even think about rushing this. This dough deserves your full attention. It's the foundation of our arepa masterpiece, and we won't settle for anything less than perfection. Now, let that dough rest for a bit. It needs time to relax before we start cooking. Second stage, it's time to fry. Right, my friends, the dough's rested. It's time to fry these beauties to golden perfection. Divide the dough into balls, then flatten them into discs. Not too thin, you want them plump and inviting, not some ordinary flat ones for an arepa. Heat up some oil in a pan, not too hot. We don't want to burn these beauties before they've had a chance to develop their signature crust. Gently place the arepas in the hot oil with ultimate care, like you're lowering a newborn into a bath. Now, keep a close eye on them. We're looking for a beautiful golden brown on each side. Once they're cooked through, remove them from the oil and let them drain on some paper towels. There you have it, everyone. Perfectly cooked arepas, ready to be stuffed with whatever your heart desires. Second recipe, the Colombian handheld feast. Next up, we're tackling another Colombian classic, empanadas. These aren't ordinary empanadas. We're talking crispy, golden pockets of pure flavor, bursting with savory fillings that will blow your mind. We're going to make our own dough from scratch because that's how we roll in this Stefini's kitchen. None of that store-bought dough. We're going for authentic Colombian flavors, and that starts with a proper homemade empanada dough. Get your rolling pins ready, my friends. We're about to embark on a culinary journey to empanada paradise. Don't even think about taking any shortcuts. We're going all out, full throttle, for empanada perfection. Now let's get started. First step, crafting the perfect dough. Right, listen up everyone. Today we're diving into the art of crafting the perfect empanada dough. This isn't just any dough, it's the foundation of a mouth-watering empanada that will leave everyone craving for more. The key to an amazing empanada is the dough. It's all about getting that perfect balance of ingredients and technique. We're going for a crispy, flaky texture that will have you begging for more. Imagine biting into that golden crust, the layers just melting in your mouth. Start by combining flour, salt, and a touch of sugar in a bowl. These basic ingredients are the building blocks of our dough. Then we'll add in some cold cubed butter. This is crucial for achieving that flaky texture we're after. And I mean cold straight from the fridge, you heard it right. The colder the better, warm butter will ruin the texture. This isn't a time for warm and fuzzy feelings, we need that butter to stay as cold as possible for maximum flakiness. The cold butter creates pockets of steam as it bakes, giving us that perfect texture. Now, use your fingertips to rub the butter into the flour until it resembles coarse breadcrumbs. This step is all about patience and precision. Don't overwork it, or you'll end up with tough, chewy empanadas. We want light and airy, not dense and heavy. And nobody wants that, do they? Trust me, a tough empanada is a sad empanada. Once the butter is incorporated, it's time to add in some ice-cold water, a little at a time. This helps bring the dough together without making it too wet. Mix it just until the dough comes together. You should see it starting to form a cohesive ball. Don't knead it. 
kneading will develop the gluten, making the dough tough. Just bring it together gently and wrap it in cling film. This helps keep the moisture in and prevents it from drying out. Then, stick it in the fridge to chill for at least 30 minutes. This resting period allows the dough to relax and the butter to firm up, ensuring that perfect flaky texture when baked. And there you have it, the foundation of a perfect empanada. Next step, filling and frying time. Now that our dough is chilling like a polar bear in a blizzard, we can turn our attention to the heart of our empanadas, the filling. It's time to talk filling. This is where the magic happens, where we infuse our empanadas with rich, bold flavors that will transport you straight to Colombia. And trust me, we're not holding back on flavor here. We're diving deep into the world of Colombian spices and ingredients. We're going for a classic Colombian beef filling, a staple that's both hearty and delicious, seasoned to perfection with cumin, paprika, and a few other secret spices that give it that authentic taste. And of course, we can't forget a touch of chili for a bit of a kick. It's all about balancing the flavors. Start by browning your ground beef in a pan. This step is crucial as it builds the base of our filling. Then add in finely chopped onions. They add a sweet, aromatic depth to the filling. Next, toss in some garlic and bell peppers. These ingredients not only add flavor, but also a beautiful color to our filling. Cook it all down until it's soft and caramelized. This process enhances the sweetness and melds the flavors together. Now here's where things get really exciting. We're going to add in those beautiful spices. Mix them in thoroughly to ensure every bite is packed with flavor, along with some chopped tomatoes and a dollop of tomato paste. These ingredients add a rich tangy element to the filling. Add a splash of water to help everything meld together and create a cohesive mixture. Let it simmer away until the flavors meld together, creating a symphony of tastes and aromas. You're left with a rich, savory filling that will make your taste buds sing with joy. Once the filling is ready, it's time to bring everything together. Roll out the chilled dough, cut out circles, and get ready to assemble our empanadas. Make sure your dough circles are even and not too thick, as this will ensure they cook evenly. Spoon a generous amount of filling onto each one, fold them over, crimp the edges to seal in all that deliciousness, and get ready to fry them to golden, crispy perfection. The frying process will give them that irresistible crunch on the outside while keeping the inside tender and flavorful. Third recipe, Little Balls of Heaven. All right, my friends, gather round. We're diving into the deep end with bunuelos. These aren't your average cheese balls, mind you. These are Colombian masterpieces, fried to perfection until they're golden brown and crispy. We're talking about a crispy exterior that gives way to a soft, gooey, cheesy center. It's enough to make your knees weak. Don't even think about skimping on the cheese either. We're going for full-on flavor explosions here. Get a load of those beauties. You can practically hear the crunch just by looking at them. And that aroma? Forget about it. It's enough to make your mouth water. But don't even think about burning them. We're aiming for golden brown perfection here, not charcoal briquettes. Control the heat, for goodness sake. First things first, mixing it up. Now, listen up, because this is where things get serious. We're talking about the dough. This isn't some haphazard, chuck-it-in-a-bowl situation. We need precision, people. The consistency has to be spot on. Too wet, and you'll end up with a soggy mess. Too dry, and you can forget about those fluffy, airy insides. Get it together. We're using a simple blend of cheese, cornstarch, and eggs. It's all about letting the ingredients shine, not masking them with a bunch of unnecessary nonsense. And don't even think about using that pre-shredded cheese from a bag. Grate the cheese fresh, you hear me? It makes all the difference in the world. Next step, fry time. All right, you've made it to the most important part frying. This is where the magic happens, but it's also where things can go wrong faster than you can say burnt bunuelo. We need the oil at the perfect temperature. Too low, and you'll end up with greasy, oil-soaked disasters. Too high, and they'll burn before you can even blink. Carefully drop those little balls of heaven into the hot oil, making sure not to overcrowd the pan. Give them space to breathe, and keep an eye on them. We're not looking for a tan, we're looking for a beautiful golden brown. Once they're done, get them out of the oil and drain them on some paper towels. Fourth recipe, plantain power. All right, my friends, listen up. We're about to embark on a culinary adventure that will change the way you think about snacks forever. 
we're diving into the world of patacones, a beloved treat in many Latin American countries. These aren't your average potato chips, no way. Patacones are a whole different ball game. We're talking twice fried plantains, crispy and ready to take on any topping you can handle. From savory to sweet, the possibilities are endless. First things first, you need some green plantains. These are the foundation of our patacones. Not yellow, not ripe green. The greener, the better. Get your hands on some good quality ones. Quality ingredients make all the difference. Now peel those plantains like you mean it, we haven't got all day. The quicker the better. Slice them about an inch thick, nice and even. This ensures they cook uniformly. Remember, consistency is key. Uneven slices will ruin the texture. Now heat up your oil. We're aiming for a temperature of around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're looking for a nice, deep, golden brown on these plantains. This is where the magic happens. We want them crispy and delicious. Fry them once until they're just starting to turn golden. Then take them out and let them rest. This is crucial, people. The first fry is all about getting that initial crisp. We need to let those plantains cool down so they can crisp up properly in the second fry. Patience is key here. While they're resting, grab yourself a plate and line it with some paper towels. This will help absorb any excess oil. This is where our fried plantains are going to drain off any excess oil. We want them to be crispy, not greasy. We want crispy, not greasy, got it? The perfect patacones should have a satisfying crunch. Now once they're cool enough to handle, it's time to flatten those plantains. Use a flat tool or the bottom of a glass to press them down evenly. This step is essential for achieving that perfect texture. Next step, the second fry. All right, everyone, it's time for round two. Our oil should be nice and hot again. We want these plantains to sizzle as soon as they hit the oil. Carefully lower them in, one by one, making sure not to overcrowd the pan. Overcrowding will drop the oil temperature and leave you with soggy patacones. And nobody wants a soggy patacone, right? Keep an eye on them. We're looking for that beautiful golden brown color all over. This second fry is what gives the patacones their signature crunch. Don't even think about taking them out until they're perfectly golden. This is where the magic happens, my friends. Once they're done, carefully remove them from the oil and place them back on our paper towel lined plate. Let them drain off any excess oil while we get started on the topping. And trust me, the topping possibilities are endless. Second step, topping it off. Now for the fun part, the toppings. Patacones are like blank canvases, just begging for some flavor. Feeling adventurous? Try a vibrant salsa verde or a fiery aji picante. Want something a bit more mellow? A dollop of guacamole or some creamy ho gao will do the trick. Don't be afraid to get creative here. Shredded chicken, crumbled cheese, diced tomatoes, the possibilities are endless. You can even go sweet and salty with a sprinkle of queso fresco and a drizzle of honey. Just make sure your toppings complement the crispy, savory flavor of the patacones. Fifth recipe, ice cold delight. All right, everyone, after all those savory treats, it's time to cool down with something sweet and refreshing. Forget your regular ice cream, we're diving into the vibrant world of cholados. This Colombian delight is a taste bud explosion, packed with fresh fruit, condensed milk, and a whole lot of icy goodness. First things first, we need ice. And not just any ice, we're talking finely shaved ice, the kind that melts in your mouth. You can use a shaved ice machine if you've got one, or a good blender will do the trick. Just make sure it's pulverized, none of those big chunks, all right? Now grab yourself a big old glass or a sturdy cup. This is where the magic happens. Start layering in your shaved ice, pressing it down firmly as you go. We want a nice compact base for our toppings, not a loose watery mess. Next step, fruit frenzy. Now for the fun part, the fruit. Cholados are all about vibrant colors and bold flavors, so don't be shy. We're talking mangoes, strawberries, bananas, kiwi, passion fruit, you name it. Chop them up into bite-sized pieces, ready to mingle with that icy goodness. Layer your fruit on top of the shaved ice, creating a beautiful rainbow of flavors. Don't be afraid to get creative here. Try different combinations and see what tickles your fancy. The more colorful, the better, I always say. And don't even think about skimping on the fruit, all right? We want a generous helping, enough to make your taste buds sing. Last step, sweet and creamy finish. Now for the finishing touches. Drizzle generously with condensed milk, letting it cascade down the sides of your icy mountain. This adds a gloriously sweet and creamy element that brings the whole thing together. Next, 
grab your favorite syrups. We're talking passion fruit, guava, blackberry, whatever takes your fancy. Drizzle those on top of the condensed milk, creating a beautiful swirl of colors and flavors. Well, there you have it, everyone. A taste of Colombia's finest street food all ready to be devoured. From the crispy perfection of patacones to the icy delight of chilados, these recipes are guaranteed to tantalize your taste buds and leave you wanting more. Now go on, get in the kitchen and show us what you've got. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more delicious recipes. For more amazing food and drinks tips and recipes, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you never miss an update from us. Tell us about your thoughts in the comment section. Check out our other videos for more culinary inspiration. We love you. Until next time, keep cooking. Stay adventurous.